do what makes you happy and everything else will fall into place. Discover what's important to you. Don't be afraid. Take some risks. Meet new people and open your mind. These are some of Connor Flynn's philosophies, and believe me, he practices what he preaches. Today, we'll be talking with author, researcher, actor, and videographer Connor Flynn from Bigfoot Anonymous. Stay tuned. Mystery Media Group presents Case File 30. Are listening to Mystery Media Group. Yay! Hello, I'm Melissa with Ghost Girl Memoirs. And I'm Mike with Paranormal Treasure Hunter, and you are listening to Destination Mysteries. We believe the paranormal is all around us, and at every destination is an adventure. We never know what we're going to find in our adventure, but we do know that we'll have an interesting story to tell when we return. We're not going to the same locations or telling the same stories that you've heard over and over. Most of our destinations will be in locations you've never thought to look or investigate or explore. We are here to bring exciting and spooky new content, and we hope you will join us in our journey toward discovering the truth. We are talking to Connor from Bigfoot Anonymous. How did you come up with your name, Bigfoot Anonymous? Uh, It started with SoundCloud. I was actually narrating anonymous encounters, and I just, you know, Bigfoot Anonymous, very lazy. So it's all all just came together. But yeah, it started on SoundCloud and I started narrating newspaper articles about giant bone excavations and wild man encounters. Just because I was so tired of people saying there's like no evidence or we need bones. It's like the bones have already been found. They used to find giant skeletons mm-hmm. in every state. The New York Giants, the Tennessee Titans, the San Francisco Giants, Moundsville, West Virginia, Wheeling, West Virginia. I've narrated over 200 newspaper articles. There's over 900 in this one database, Giants of Ancient America. He collects giant bone excavation uh, articles that come from different decades, different newspapers. And I know they wanted to sell papers back in the day, but it was also just news. There's crazy specifics that would only be known if you did the excavation. What kind of adventures did you go on today? I had a pretty magical day today. I worked for a bit, but then uh, Tristan from Hidden Relief uh, met up with me and we stopped at my mom's. You know, walked around her pond and went into the back woods. And then we stopped at a couple of abandoned places. Uh, mm-hmm. So I've already had a pretty magical day full of exploring. We got to visit an abandoned place. It was It's a place we've been wanting to go to for like 20 years. And we finally got to go. And it was so fun. Where where was it? Have you ever heard of St. Anne's Retreat? I'm in not London? sure if I have. Maybe, maybe in late night uh, scary stories on YouTube. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But that's awesome that you've got some abandoned places you can go visit on your mom's property. She lives around the edge of the woods and there's a couple of trailers. And uh, just ever since Hurricane Michael, there's just been a bunch of stuff left to ruin. It's nice to go places that have been forgotten. I like to honor these Mm -hmm. places. Uh, I don't call it trespassing. I call it respecting. Right. Right. That's a good way of putting it. I like it. We get so frustrated with all those trespassing signs. It's, It's just annoying. 100%. It's only trespassing if you refuse to leave after you're told. You can push the limit until they tell you. So (laughs) then just be respectful. You know, I have no problem. I'll give them a copy of my book. I ordered one today. Oh, I appreciate it. You can read in any order uh, because they're a collection of short stories that kind of display my whole journey. Uh, The first one, Erie Swamps, Road Trip to Eden. It talks about my journey from Lake Erie down to the Florida Swamp. And then the last chapter is Garden of Eden because there's a trail over here that's the Garden of Eden Trail. 27 of the 28 trees in the Bible are in that park. Uh, It's the lightest, strongest wood in the world. 
and it's also known as gopher wood. That's what Noah used to build the ark. The only place it grows, that type of terrea, is right here. And then a delta that breaks in the four rivers, right here, like the good book says. So it's definitely sacred soil. There's something to it. I think there's many adaptations of Eden throughout this planet. There is thousands of continents out there. But then the second one is uh, Big Brother Bigfoot. And this one is like my research document. This is me going out and collecting data from Canada down to Florida, out to the Grand Canyon in Arizona, and then Big Bear Lake in California. I don't think Big Bear Lake was named after bears. I think it was oh. things that were called bears. And right. there's tons of stories, hours of stories on YouTube of people having strange encounters around that lake. So there's definitely something to it. There's high altitude, magnetic pools, and all the frequencies and energy, it all just circles through the ley lines. And that's why Florida is a hot spot too, because we're right by the Bermuda Triangle. So everything just gets sucked here. So all those creatures just follow those lines. And then of course, Ohio, where I grew up, land of the mound builders, more than 10,000 mounds are in that state. People don't know about American pyramids. It's just like the ancient Aztecs, the Egyptians, the Sumerians. They're working on a different playing field of more than just frequency and energy. And that's all we are. We're just vibrations. We're protons and neutrons. We can become particle and we can become waveform. Most of the time we're particle, we're solid. But in those true moments of being, we can become waveform. Open your mind. We are magical. We forgot all this stuff that's in our vocabulary. It's, it's right there. We're, we're all witches and clairvoyants and haggards. <laughs> I like it. Big Brother Bigfoot would be right up your alley, Mike. Yeah, I think so. I'm about the true beings of this planet. No one gets to even ask those questions. Like, we can't even get past the surface. So, of course, we're never going to get some answers. That's why we have to find the answers and just run with it. Modern academia is so far behind. Truth Denied, the Sasquatch study by Scott Carpenter. And Scott Carpenter was part of the Melba Ketchum study that they got over 125 DNA samples. I just did an interview this past weekend with a, a tracker named Tim T. He had Sasquatch hair, and I got to see what it looked like under a microscope. I interviewed a, a PhD doctor the other day, too, that brought a, a Bigfoot torn apple bag to the Florida Bigfoot Conference, and I made a video about it. You know, because I face a lot of scorn being a Bigfoot and paranormal and that I believe in heaven and God. I'm a true crazy maniac. You know, I believe up is up, down is down, and heaven is real. And somehow that finds me on the opposite side of the fence of a lot of people. So that shows like where this world is. I, I try to see through the lines, but these times are getting blurry nowadays. You just got back from the Florida Bigfoot Conference. Yes. Tell me about it. And what was your favorite part? Oh man, the, my favorite part was staying with Tim T. Like, we got hit by Hurricane Elsa, so our camp got wiped out. So I, I was ready to camp out at Publix or some, you know, some rest stop. But Tim T opened his house to us, and he has a mountain of Sasquatch evidence. He's taken a bunch of tracks, found hair, candy bars that he has footage of them taken. Just crazy stuff that you only get to see that firsthand. But at the conference, though, oh, my gosh, it was so magical. Got to meet. Cliff Brackman, uh, Bobo, and got to hear his famous call. Stacy Brown, he has the famous Torreya State Park footage, and he's kind of like an outcast like me. And I actually got invited to join his outcast paranormal like dream team, and I accepted. So it was really cool. And then I got to meet a bunch of internet friends like Central Florida Bigfoot, Mogion Monster, Iron Dogger. But just talking to people, and uh, I interviewed a bunch of people, you know, they appreciate someone coming to their booth and like chopping it up. And, and then I stopped at the Jeepers Creepers filming location where they filmed Edward Scissorhands. But we stopped in Gainesville at the Devil's Mill Hopper. It's a sinkhole that they said used to be an entrance to hell. So even on the road trips, we, we did a bunch of detours because we have to. You have to pull the trigger now. You have to do stuff now because you might never get the chance. So to be there at the Florida Bigfoot Conference, I still have videos that I'm releasing and my stuff uh, has been blown up a little bit on TikTok because we got uh, pictures of three Sasquatch footprints of this one palm tree that was shredded apart all the way up to 20 feet tall. 
this one portal like structure that is peeled from the uh, big tree like nine feet and then curled up very very cool and it's just once in a lifetime chance it was in the green swamp and we went out with like nine different investigators and I was honored to be out with them and they were honored to be out there with me, you know, the, the crazy guy. And I was like, man, you guys will definitely be in the next chapter uh, because I'm definitely writing a whole, probably third of a book about the whole weekend. And we stayed at a haunted house too. And then the conference was incredible. And then we had two expeditions, one nighttime one and one the next morning in the green swamp. People have already pointed out a uh, Bigfoot in the back of our footage. And there's one that it looks like this big, dark figure. And you can see like an armpit and kind of hair. And uh, it was Tim T's footage. And he's supposed to do a breakdown of it soon. So Tim T in Florida. Anybody want to check it out? He is a great guy. He welcomed us in. It was so magical. And we did the most. And I used to live in Lakeland as well. I moved from Ohio down to Lakeland and lived out of my car. And I joined a punk rock musical. And then we did that for about 10 months. And then we moved from Florida down to California for the summer. So it was pretty wild uh, living on the road. But coming back to Lakeland, it was really emotional for me. And to show my friends my old house and then do a video there. And uh, my neighbor, who I was real close with, he passed away. So I got to do a nice little tribute to him. It was cool. It was very cool. Even my shoulder still hurts from sleeping on the ground on sleeping bags and in the broken couches. But made me who I am. And a lot of it is in my books and in my stories today. So it's awesome. I wouldn't trade it for the world. You're living the life, man. You're yeah. just enjoying every minute you can. That's amazing. Doing what I can. My, Michael, what's uh, your friend from Florida? That was Stacy Brown. Oh, did you, was he there? Yep. Stacy Brown. He, he's the one that invited me to Outcast Paranormal. Literally, like I came to see his speech because he's, he's phenomenal and he's from this area. And uh, we hiked those same trails that he recorded that footage. And we recorded a lot of strange stuff. It had boulders thrown at us. I've recorded some uh, strange faces and howls and whoops. A lot of weird stuff that's going on. And, you know, they're always around. At least if you're open to them, they're always around. If they know you're a threat, I'm sure they scram. But if they know you're a peaceful being, they'll make themselves known. But, yeah, Stacy's the man. I can't wait to, like, join him on the Outcast Paranormal. You've had encounters then. Have oh, you? yeah, yeah. Do you want to tell us about your first encounter? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was when I was younger, and I was staying at my friend Alex's house. Uh, we were shooting pool, and we felt this strange feeling come upon us. So we moved to the side, and we turn off the lights, and we're peeking through this little window, and we see this hulking figure down in the den just, like, staring at us. And uh, I got Jake and Alex to write a testimony for it for my book, and they talk about, like, seeing eyes glowing. And then we end up peeking out there probably like 20 minutes later. Didn't see it. Hours later, we're trying to fall asleep. And we were just so scared that we ended up having to sleep upstairs. We told his mom about it. And then she ended up telling us that she hears like man-made owl calls all the time. Uh, so hearing that was just crazy. And it all just corroborated. Yeah, that was when we were about like 12 years old. And it shook us to our core. It didn't really scare us to go into the woods or anything, but it really showed us that like the legends were real. And then I had tons of experiences after that. And we definitely uh, felt a lot of strange feelings and we had things approach us. When we were out there in the green swamp, I knew we were surrounded by stuff, but I was not threatened at all. And then go back to Torreya State Park. I've had times where I didn't even really feel surrounded, but I was scared to death. Like I knew something was out there that maybe didn't want us out there. So you just have to read the vibes. Sometimes it's super dark, but everything's cheerful. And then other times it's bright early in the morning, but you're, you're dreadful. I think a lot of people have had a lot of strange encounters and they try to write it off or they just can't really process it. And those stories are in your, your brother Bigfoot book? Yes, yes. They're, uh, they're scattered throughout. Pretty much uh, my big brother Bigfoot, it, it's like 16 chapters about different creatures and uh, stories that I've encountered and investigated. The Susquehanna seal up in New York, that was actually with Alex. We were staying on a Susquehanna River and we found this huge den and we just thought it was just like some kind of, some kind of land fish. But then I ended up reading in the future about the Susquehanna seal. It was some kind of hairy mammal lizard type creature that 
roam through the Susquehanna Valley, roam through the Susquehanna Valley. And then the Ohio River, I used to fish there with my mom and my grandpa. And one time we saw these, I guess, serpent-like creatures. I just saw their backs come out. Clearly a lot of creatures in the Ohio River Valley. So the door is open for, yeah, really anything. But anything Sasquatch and Dogman and Werewolf related is Big Brother Bigfoot. Erie Swamp's road trip to Eden is literally like a mixture of stuff. Uh, The Witch's Ball, Crybaby Bridges, both those are really haunted spots like right by my house growing up. And like on Friday nights and Saturday nights, instead of going to the movies, we'd go there and uh, scare the girls. And it was always a good time. That's what I always say. I always say uh, cool places bring cool people. That's why I wanted to write the books because I had so many stories that I'm like, dang, if I die, they die with me. I want to share this. Even if three people here, it's it's worth it because the tales of White Shoes and Helltown and the Brandywine Falls, they're important. They they helped shape me. You know, no one down in Florida knows about them. And then no one in Ohio knows about the Florida legends. So it really shows you the beauty of just telling your own story and people people will find it. I love it. And by the way, we're just coming out with our first book. It's going to be like a case files log of our investigations and stuff. And the very first thing I put in there is this is not going to be a literary masterpiece. So if you find a mistake, deal with it. It's not going to be not hey, going to be perfect. Hey, right about the grammar. It's about the adventure. Exactly. For sure. Feel free to keep that in there. Just have that attitude. Like they read in the book, they get what they get. If you're in the woods and you scribble something that is important data and they're going to pull apart your grammar. Yeah, uh, I'm a perfectionist, and there's definitely a couple of parts that I overlook, a couple of my friends editing, helping me out. We overlook. Who cares? Who Who really cares? It's about the story. And I can't wait to read your book. That's that's awesome. And that's that's basically what mine is, case case studies, 100%. Mm -hmm. That's super cool. Yeah, I think it's good. We can hardly complete a sentence. How are we supposed to write one? Exactly. Real passion, <laughs> and I just well, I want to I want to know what I know, and I want to share my stories. I want everybody to be doing the filming locations there nearby their house. I want them to be showing us the abandoned spots, and then going into the Bigfoot files that people have had sighting. Go to that location, you know. I, I want to just inspire a community of people that are doing that, and and there are people doing that, just like you, Tristan from Hater Relief, Tim T, Marie Dupont, every, everybody's out there doing their thing, but I just want to get more people out there. A lot of people are scared to leave their house right now and take your shoes off, feel the creek, let your lungs breathe. There's nothing better than that. And I just try to inspire people through action. Don't be scared, anybody, guys. Just move forward with your life. I agree. So you mentioned uh, you wanted to speak about the mounds. Yes, I'm very passionate about the mounds because I came from Ohio, land of the mounds, more than 10,000 mounds. If I was actually in West Virginia, it was in Moundsville, which is named after all the mounds. But it was across from the West Virginia Penitentiary, where Charles Manson's mom was kept, and Charlie actually grew up in there because his mom was being kept there. But right across the street was the Adena Mound, and that's where they've excavated giant skeletons like 12 feet long and gold and different coins from the ancient days. Crazy stuff, all in newspaper articles, all documented. But I grew up seeing that mound and just always being attracted to it. In Medina, the county I grew up from, the tallest couple to ever exist. There are a couple of giants that are eight feet tall, and their grave is there. The land of the giants has always been right in my heart. So I always looked at mounds as just beautiful structures that align with the stars, and the sun and the moon, the winter equinox, the summer solstice. Fast forward down to Florida, in the Chattahoochee Mounds, there's one giant center one, and then there's six in a semicircle, and they all align with the Kolomoki Mounds up in Georgia and the summer solstice and the winter equinox. And the fact that these ancient people could do that is truly spectacular, and it had a lot to do with ceremonial things. But I've just had such a passion for these mounds that I've found a line of them here. The Kesa Mounds, the Chattahoochee Mounds, the Letchworth Mounds, the Lake Jackson Mounds, the Kolomoki, the Velda Mound. And all of them have strange stories, like the glowing wolf of the Velda Mound. They see this glowing white wolf. So we went and investigated it. We actually heard strange sounds during the night, but no glows or anything. 
it's sad because a lot of these places aren't getting talked about or even visited. Uh, so I'm just trying to raise awareness and try to, you know, bring back some history because we're surrounded by it. Are and, these uh, in, your, in one of your books too? I mentioned the mounds uh, and there's pictures of mounds in the books. I just finished my newest book. It's called Panhandle Pirates. That one talks about all the mounds I've been to because I'm talking to a lot of locals around here and a lot of my books start in Ohio and end in Florida or start in Florida and end in California. And people just want the local stories. So I wrote one all about the local stories and they're all part of his story rewind. I uh, went to film school for college. I've been in a couple of uh, big feature length films, not big feature length films, but real movies. Um, and then I've done a bunch of short films and, uh, you know, commercials and crap like that. And then of course I'm the man behind the camera all the time. Uh, this just came out a week ago. It's called Zilla foot. I have a small part in it. I actually just basically play myself. I'm a cryptid research officer. I walk into the military bunker and I warn them about impending doom. These nasty aliens, they summon Zilla foot to take over the world. And of course the military, they don't want to hear it. They escort me out. And uh, it's, it's really funny. It's so bad. It's good. I'm, I'm proud of it. Awesome to work with Jack McClellan. He's also a Bigfoot uh, filmmaker. And so we're actually filming a short film uh, on Dogman this weekend. What other movies are you in? I'm in a movie called At the End of the Day. It's a uh, church movie that was filmed in Lakeland, uh, directed by Tom O'Brien. It's a very cool LGBTQ uh, story. Uh, that is definitely out of my comfort zone, but it was awesome stepping into that world and just meeting new actors and they embraced me with open arms. And it, it's honestly a really emotional film and I'm proud to be a part of it. And there was a couple people that were in like, remember the Titans and the Punisher that were in it. And I, you know, I got to talk to them about working next to Denzel Washington and Kevin Bacon, seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. I'm like only two away. So it's very cool. I'm proud of it, and I uh, still get to uh, show it off to this day. And then I was in a couple short films at Bowling Green State University. Um, and then I've also done a couple cameos in other, like, FSU short films, too. Did you say you went with Stacy Brown to that location where they got the, the footage with the thermal imager? No, I, I wasn't. No, we were actually supposed to camp there, like, six weeks ago, uh, but it ended up getting canceled. But I've hiked there probably oh. 15, 15 times. And I've uh, recorded rock throws and uh, taken pictures of some strange things that I believe are Sasquatch and Dogmen. Uh, but yeah, uh, not at the same time yet, but we're definitely planning it. Our next adventure is going to be in Wakulla because that's where he lives. And there's rumored a old volcano there deep in the swamp. So we're going to try to find the smoking volcano. But yeah, we're definitely going to go to uh, Torea because, yeah, that footage is the best mm, thermal footage be ever recorded. Yeah, I can't wait, man. I'm super pumped because Stacy's so cool. Right? My brother-in-law is wow. Stacy's brother. So we so, went out there before he really started getting into squatching and we got some uh, Bigfoot pheromones and we went out a few times and we had a great time, but we never saw anything. How do you get Bigfoot pheromones? Well, I asked that. and he, <laughs> it, was chi it was Chinese monkeys and something else. And wow, that stunk. Well, remind Stacy that we're still waiting for him to come down to Idaho and Utah with us I and uh, Cliff and Jeff. Yeah, and Bobo. I want to meet and, Bobo. Oh, yeah, we haven't met Bobo. We've met Cliff and then Jeff Meldrum's down here. It would be a good group. Heck, yeah, that's, that's a bunch of legends. Yeah, it's, it's very cool when you when you open and pop that bubble, man, you'll you'll get to talk to people that have strange encounters. Like, you know, once you once you make them feel comfortable, you're going to hear some good family legends. It's amazing. When we were younger, you didn't talk about any of this stuff. Like it was not something you could do. And I love now that we're kind of opening up more. People just come to us with their stories. And I'm like, this is so cool. Everybody's had some sort of paranormal experience, whether they want to admit it or not. Most people are willing to open up and share it with you. If they know you're, you've got an open mind. It's pretty cool. Right. hundred percent. Love I it. work at the comic book store and, you know, I get, I ask people every day uh, if they've had any strange encounters and I get some good interviews and I've had people uh, show me, you know, pictures and then send me audio too. I have great audio from some crazy Bigfoot calls that I, I can't wait to like enhance it and uh, hopefully let it be part of some kind of documentary. I love Bigfoot audio. It's my favorite. 
Well, I'll, I'll email you guys oh, all please. the ones that I have. Please. I have very much enjoyed talking to you. I love how you have a philo- your philosophy on life and your your crazy adventures and how you live is what everybody should be doing. We should all be as excited about life and the journey as you are. You're doing awesome. Love it. I appreciate that. It, it's hard. It's definitely hard sometimes, you know, just, oh, like, know. just like anybody, you know, I'm a freaking outcast most of the mm-hmm. time and that's hard to deal with. Being around people that just get it, yep. it makes, it makes you feel, you know, and I encourage everybody just be yourself. And if you don't fit in, keep being yourself and you'll meet the right people. That's what I'm myself, like just faithfully, you know, and it makes people feel uncomfortable in some ways. So but that's their problem, not yours. A hundred percent. I encourage people to get out, breathe, right. Live your life. Be don't yourself. Let anybody change you. Love the message. I love the message, Connor. You are an amazing individual. I was, I'm honored that you came on our podcast today. Can't wait to read your books and learn more about your life. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys checking out the books. Uh, Let me know what you think of the Wacko books. Uh, But yeah, guys, definitely appreciate it. And if anybody likes what I'm putting down, check me out on YouTube, uh, Bigfoot Anonymous on TikTok. I also make music, C. Flynna, uh, Connor Flynn with the A, you know, C. Flynna. Thanks so much. We appreciate it. Take it easy. Thanks, man. Have a great night. You too. Peace out. If you enjoy our show, please like, subscribe, and leave a five-star review. We will be introducing other Mystery Media Group guests in our upcoming episodes, along with weekly bonus material. If you'd like to see more pictures and evidence from our adventures, visit www.destination-mystery.com. You will find a link to our blog, as well as a link for merch and contact information. Until next time, find your own destination. Solve the mystery. This is a production of Mystery Media Group. Yay!